Yes, the Bobby Moe Show presented by Dollar Energy Fund and First Commonwealth Bank. Dollar Energy Fund helping our neighbors in need maintain basic utility service since 1983. Visit dollarenergyfund.org or text DEF, that's DEF, to 53555. First Commonwealth Bank is here to help you build financial confidence through everyday moments of life by supporting businesses to helping families find a house they love to call home and saving for whatever tomorrow brings. Visit a First Commonwealth office or visit fcbanking.com, member FDIC. Hi and welcome to the Bobby Moe Show. This week's guest is a special guest. He is the Vice President and Director of Athletics here at Robert Morris University. Chris King. Chris, great to have you on the Bobby Moe Show. Well, I appreciate you having me on the Bobby Moe Show. I don't know if I call myself special. <laughs> uh, I think our, our head coaches are the special guests. I'm just the, uh, I'm probably the, the closer as we get closer to the end of the year, probably, right? All right. Yeah, but a lot of good stuff is up, and we yeah. need to, to have this special segment of the Bobby Moe Show to talk about uh, what has happened and what is happening, and there's a lot happening. We'll save that for just a little bit, but right now, I need to get your thoughts on the uh, close of the Horizon League basketball tournament, the way the men's and women's teams mm -hmm. uh, both fared basketball-wise this year. I know it was exciting. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we closed out. I mean, of course, you know, both, I'm sure that uh, Coach Tool and Coach Piscagula both, I'm sure, wanted to, you know, be participating this week in March Madness, but, you know, not everybody uh, can do that uh, in the Horizon League. And But, uh, you know, we're making strides, uh, you know, from uh, the last couple of years. And I know Coach Tool, uh, you know, we, we finished strong. Uh, and, of course, you know, we took you know, Cleveland State uh, down to the end and ended up, uh, you know, losing in, in overtime. And, of course, Cleveland State, um, you know, I think they lost by a bucket in the Horizon League Championship yeah. game. And uh, so, you know, it's unfortunate. But, um, you know, we, 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 we've come a long way. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of returners coming back next year, so we're excited about um, next season. And, uh, you know, on the women's side, um, you know, we had a lot of injuries, uh, a few departures. And so, um, but, you know, he's had a lot of success uh, in his career, and he's going to uh, retool, and he's got a lot of, incoming recruits uh, coming in and so uh, I see I see him being in the upper half and you know fighting for the crown next year so you know as the athletic director um, you know as you kind of like watch your teams and the progress of your of your, of your programs and as we get into the fourth year uh, in the Horizon League and of course in you know some of our we're in like five different conferences uh, you can kind of see the progress uh, that the teams are making and, and so I'm really excited I know we're still in the middle of this year with our spring sports mm -hmm. but really excited uh, about next year because I kind of see some, I think, some big things on the horizon, no pun intended. Chris, we saw a few more people in the building this year for basketball as well. We did. So our attendance went, uh, went pretty pretty far up and, you know, our, our viewership went up quite dramatically, um, you know, with our ESPN uh, Plus um, uh, viewership, particularly in football. We just got our numbers back from the Big South and uh, the Dayton game had 30,000 viewers uh, wow. for the first game. Every one of our football games uh, we doubled uh, in viewership from the previous two seasons. And so pretty excited about that. We will get our basketball numbers a little later here in the spring. Uh, but attendance is up, uh, particularly up later in the year. Uh, you know, we've uh, had sold a lot more tickets, you know, groups, packages, experiences. Uh, our external team did a really great job. And of course, you know, I mean, we got, uh, uh, you know, get the best guy on the mic. You know whether it's at home or on the road, and You're so talking about Jimmy Elias. Now right? we're talking about uh, talking about well, of course Jimmy, but uh, we're talking about you. You know, you, you're you. promoting us both uh, both uh, on the mic, but you know also everybody knows you know voice of the Colonials, and so yeah. got the best promoter uh, in, the, uh, in the in the region. Appreciate that, Chris, very much. No question about it. All right, let's go off the court, off the field right mm -hmm. now. Let's talk about uh, some of the other big things happening in the athletic department. One of those is the extension of the agreement that we have with mm -hmm. Under Armour, which is our favorite clothing. Yeah, we're really excited about that. So, you know, when I arrived here, we had a seven-year contract with Under Armour, and, it, you know, it was a good deal, but it was a first-time deal. Uh, and so normally you really kind of make a big jump, big leap in your second, your third uh, agreement. And so... Uh, I got a good relationship with Under Armour um, and with uh, the, the individual that oversees the collegiate sports market. And so we um, have a chance to probably double the allotment and what we had before, uh, not quite double it, but it, pretty significantly close to it. Uh, you know, we were able to do some things we weren't able to do before. And so uh, all of our teams uh, are gonna see a significant um, amount uh, additional of, um, of uh, apparel and footwear next year. Uh, I know they're going to be really excited about it. So we've got some really cool and unique things we're going to do um, uh, with our teams as well as I think you'll see uh, the Under Armour logo up and some branding 
throughout all of our facilities, through the locker rooms, through the corridors, the hallways, to protect the house. Uh, I think you'll see that quite a bit more here in the UPMC Event Center as well. Uh, so really excited about uh, what they were willing to do and, and what they were willing to invest uh, in the RMU Colonial. So uh, I think it's going to be a really cool uh, deal that we're going to we're excited to extend over the next five years. It's really top notch and good looking gear. It too. is. It truly, it is. truly is. All right, uh, that leads me to the next subject, and that's NIL, name, yes. image, likeness. That is the, and has been over the last couple of yes. years, the big buzz word mm -hmm. or buzz term. Uh, in athletics at the collegiate level, and I know there's something brand new called the Bobby Moe Exchange. Mm -hmm. Tell me about NIL and the Bobby Moe Exchange. Yeah, so we're probably about two years into name, image, and likeness, you know, and I think everybody kind of started out a little bit snow, slow. So we actually, uh, we, we signed on with a, with a company called Influencer, and so uh, it's a technology platform. It, it, was, it was more about education, uh, educating our athletes on, uh, say, like, um, you know, their personal brand, financial literacy, um, you know, being able to um, really kind of utilize their name, image, and likeness to be able to profit off of uh, their name, image, and likeness, right? Uh, and so we were kind of probably ahead of um, everybody else in the Horizon League. And, um, and so part of that, uh, <clears throat> again, is actually providing our athletes opportunities uh, for them to, to be able to have opportunities to go out to like local businesses. And so um, we want to make it as easy as possible for them. But we also want to make it as easy as possible for local businesses, individuals, um, to be able to um, uh, understand and, and be able to work with our athletes that uh, are more entrepreneurial, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Um, that may have a lot of followers in social media, um, that may actually be able to utilize their market value, um, be able to use, maybe market their roster value, right? Um, and so uh, being able to go with the Bobby Moe Exchange through Influencer um, allows it as an easy connection um, for businesses or individuals uh, to connect with our athletes, or if some of our athletes have a huge following, maybe the representatives. Um, and so it's a really cool uh, platform, technology platform that can go up uh, on our, um, our website, mm -hmm. be able to connect with our athletes, uh, and then potentially you know, be able to come up with a partnership and our athletes can make a little bit of money, uh, which is always good. Um, but also, uh, it, it's a way uh, for them to be able to, to grow their brand as well. Uh, and so it's a really kind of a cool way, uh, I think, for our athletes. I think they're excited about it. So they're, they're up there putting their profiles up there right now, and some are a little more entrepreneurial than others. And, uh, and so there's some other things we're doing. Um, you know, we're getting ready to even look at um, uh, working with a third party on a collective, mm -hmm. uh, potentially. And again, you know, that's the landscape of college athletics right now. And those are things that, you know, again, we're in the Horizon League, the Big South for football, and several other conferences for our other sports. And, you know, it's kind of the, the way uh, the way the landscape's going. And so if we want to be players in the game and be competitive, um, those are the things that you got to do to uh, to be up there in the upper half. Just think 10 years ago, we would have never thought about that type of activity. And the learning curve has changed not only for the student athletes, but for the universities themselves. No, it's it's uh, it's a different it's a definitely a different world. Yeah. Uh, and I can tell you, and I, I spoke um, to a, a, a law school class last night and I was talking in regards to just the, the changing landscape and the NIL and uh, just, I mean, everything that's come, I mean, in the last three years since the pandemic, more has happened in the last three years than that's happened in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, it's just been, you know, just uh, such an evolution uh, within college athletics and, and our industry. And so uh, you got to kind of, you got to, you know, continue to evolve and, you know, the Bayou Exchange and, you know, signing, you know, bigger deals with Under Armour and, uh, you know, those are the types of things you got to do um, if you want to, you know, maintain that competitive success. And uh, again, you got to be able to recruit the best and brightest. And um, these are the types of deals uh, and endorsement that you got to be able to do to, to be able to recruit them. Yep, for sure. We're going to take a short time out. We'll come back and talk more. We have a lot more to talk about, too, with Vice President and Director of Athletics Chris King here at Robert Morris University right after this on the Bobby Moe Show. The RMU men's and women's lacrosse teams are back at Joe Walton Stadium this Saturday, March 18th. The RMU women take on Queens at 11 a.m. and the RMU men battle Jacksonville at 2. Tickets are on sale now through Ticketmaster or get them at the Joe Walton Stadium ticket office on Saturday. For complete RMU lacrosse schedule and ticket information, check out rmucolonials.com. RMU Athletics was proud to partner with Dollar Energy Fund at First Commonwealth Bank for the Points for Power program this season. For every point scored by the RMU men's and women's basketball teams, 
First Commonwealth Bank donated $1 to Dollar Energy Fund and then the donation was matched dollar for dollar by Dollar Energy Fund's utility partners to help local families keep their homes warm this winter. This season, $8,040 was raised to help our neighbors in need. More of the Bobby Mo Show coming up next. Many families in our community are struggling to make ends meet and can't afford their monthly utility bills. They are at risk of a gas, water, or electric service shutoff, which could make it impossible to do even the most basic of household tasks. You can make a difference by making a donation to Dollar Energy Fund. Your contribution will be matched dollar for dollar by Dollar Energy Fund's utility partners, and 100% of all donations will be used to help local families maintain or restore utility services. Help your neighbors in need and donate today at dollarenergy.org. At First Commonwealth Bank, we're excited to be your community bank, here to help you build greater financial confidence through the everyday moments of life. By supporting local businesses that strengthen communities to helping families find a house they love to call home and saving for whatever tomorrow brings. Visit any of our community offices to start your journey to better or visit fcbanking.com. First Commonwealth Bank, member FDIC. Welcome back. Segment two of the Bobby Moe Show with Vice President and Director of Athletics, Chris King. We're talking about a variety of different subjects here today. Let's go back out onto the field, more aptly, out onto the pitch. Mm -hmm. I used to be the voice of the Riverhound, so I knew a little bit about okay. soccer. Not much, but a little bit. But I'll tell you who does is a brand new uh, head soccer coach here at Robert Morris University, Jonathan Potter. Tell me about him. So Coach Potter, uh, we hired him back in December. Um, you know, so we had, we had lost um, our coach, uh, Jason O'Keefe. You know, he had been with us for two years, did a great job. Uh, you know, we were able to elevate our, our soccer program, you know, made the, the Horizon League uh, tournament the past two years. Uh, really, I mean, we had a chance to be in the championship game this year. Um, you know, we ended up playing, I think, almost 70 minutes on a red card. Wow. Um, <laughs> you know, and we ended up going to, the, I think it was double overtime, and we had a, um, oh gosh, I want to say they went to like nine penalty kicks. Um, and so, I mean, he, he, we had a really great team. And uh, so, you know, he ended up, um, uh, he ended up going back home for family reasons. Mm -hmm. And um, and so uh, we had uh, an extremely talented pool of candidates. Uh, just because we were turning 26 players. Uh, so we have a really talented group of young men coming back for next year. Uh, and we probably will be picked top two or three in the conference, sure. if not maybe the preseason favorite. So Coach Potter uh, was at a, um, a small private school, Presbyterian College. Uh, Presbyterian uh, has had tremendous success um, in the Big South Conference. Right. Uh, very difficult um, place to win and he's won uh, a number of years there. He's been in the NCAA tournament. He's had really good success there, but uh, he's, he's won everywhere he's been uh, as an assistant coach prior to that. He's had some incredible mentors. Uh, I know um, uh, quite a few uh, of the soccer coaches that he uh, worked under as well, and he just came very, very highly recommended. And so uh, he came here, he interviewed, and when I interview coaches, the one thing that really impresses me is he kept telling me how much he wants to be the next head coach at Robert Morris. I hear it all the time. Uh, coaches want to be. A, I want to be a Division One head coach. Sure. I call it no kidding rule. No kidding. <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, I mean, he was very passionate yeah. about wanting to be here. Um, and his uh, his wife and kids, you know, they're going to be a great fit for here. His wife got a job at UPMC right away, uh, and so he's just really excited about this opportunity. He's been a great fit uh, right away. Uh, I'm really excited. Uh, really excited for the soccer program. Uh, and again, when you get into the fall season. It's, you know, you're starting the fall. You want to win championships. Right. Uh, and I think we got a great shot at winning a championship with a first year head coach. We did it with Craig McDonald, hired him late last year. Uh, you know, whenever um, Coach McMahon had a chance to go out to Utah, you know, Craig came in late, um, you know, ended up winning the, you know, the A Sun last year, goes off, goes into the NCAAs. And I, I think that, uh, you know, Coach Potter's got the same opportunity next fall. We're excited. We're excited about having him here. I kiddingly mentioned the Riverhounds a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. but there is a relationship between there Robert is. Morris University men's and women's soccer and yes. the Hounds. Yeah, so the Riverhounds, um, they, they, they teamed up um, down in Coriopolis and they built a tremendous facility uh, down there. It's a, a practice facility, indoor facility, outdoor fields. Uh, they teamed up with Highmark. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a beautiful indoor facility. And so uh, we, we practice um, a lot of our sports in the RMU Dome, which we're fortunate mm -hmm. to have that down there at the Island Sports Center. 
Um, but, you know, it, it gets crowded uh, with all of our teams in, in the winter months. And so, uh, and to be able to say that you're practicing at a facility like the Pittsburgh River Hounds, I mean, it's a great recruiting tool. Um, and it was pretty, our men's and women's soccer teams are pretty excited. We have a relationship with the River Hounds. We also have a special relationship with Jeff Garner, the new president Absolutely. of the River Hounds. He's an RMU grad, school of business, played football here. Uh, we also, he and I went into the RMU Sports Management Hall of Fame uh, at the same time. Uh, so there's a, there's a personal relationship there as well. And so there's some other things we want to do uh, down the road with the River Hounds, but uh, we're excited uh, about that opportunity. I know the coaches are really enjoying the opportunity to be able to, to play in that unbelievably beautiful facility. Yeah. So. Truly is. Unleash the Colonials. Yes, right? absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, some new student athlete support service initiatives uh, that are coming up, particularly uh, starting in this semester. I know there's a lot mm -hmm. that goes on that, you know, maybe the, the common fan doesn't see. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, again, everybody, everybody always, you know, they hear about the competitive success and the competitive excellence and they want to always look at the scoreboard and the championships. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's about the student athlete. You know, it's about graduating our student athletes, you know. And again, we talk about, you know, Unite, um, you know, uniting as a, as a department, you know. Um, but it's, it's about, you know, supporting our student athletes. And, and now more than ever, you know, uh, we want to be able to really support our athletes, not just on the playing courts and playing fields, but also in the classroom. Um, but there, there's a lot of, you know, things coming out of the pandemic from mental health and wellness um, to making sure that academically we're providing them the resources uh, that they need. And so we started with um, we need more uh, support staff. And so, you know, we had uh, some departures in our senior staff. And so we were able to break up some of these positions and create some new positions. And so we brought in um, uh, an academic advisor. We ended up uh, creating a position because the NIL, the name, image and likeness is so you know, prevalent now. So we created another compliance position with uh, a 50% responsibility on name, image, and likeness, and they can actually work a lot more with this influencer, work with the Bobby Mo Exchange, work a little bit more on the student athlete programming side and the education of the name, image, and likeness with our student athletes. Uh, so, I mean, those are the types of things that our student athletes will appreciate uh, quite a bit, work more on the student athlete programming. But then we've also put quite a bit of resources into the mental health and wellness. Um, and that's been something that's uh, a huge topic um, in the NCA. Uh, there's a what's called the NCA Division One Transformation Committee. They're coming out with significant recommendations on what it takes to be a Division One program. And there's really, um, it, there's gonna be an elevated expectation and resources that have to be put into student support services. And we're trying to get ahead of the game now. Um, and so uh, the Horizon League uh, has stepped up. They, they, uh, they put in about $550,000 worth uh, of mental health and wellness grants to the 11 institutions in the Horizon League. So we got a $50,000 worth uh, of, of grant uh, towards mental health and wellness. And so we're actually, uh, we signed on with uh, two contracts, one with what's called uh, a Hone Mental Training App. And so uh, we are working with all of our teams um, with that app. And then we also signed a contract with a uh, virtual counseling company called uh, Crossover Counseling, uh, where they do virtual counseling for those that may need, you know, to be able to talk to somebody sure. when they have some, you know, counseling, you know, with some mental health and wellness uh, concerns. And so uh, we've done a lot this spring and put a lot of emphasis uh, into that side of it. And so. Uh, very proud of it, very excited about it, but that's just the first step. We know we've got to do a lot more, uh, you know, being a smaller private uh, Division One school, you know, resources can be a little scarce. Um, and so we're very excited that the Horizon League uh, placed an emphasis into that and we're going to continue to put a place an emphasis into our student athletes and their student athlete experience. That's, that's great that the Horizon League and Robert Morris University mm -hmm. itself uh, continue to address uh, those very very uh, critical needs for the student athletes, no doubt about it. And I, I, you know, I, I don't think anybody realized what an impact uh, the COVID-19 pandemic had um, on young people in particular. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a different age. Um, you know, and it, the stressors that athletes have, and student body, uh, it's not just athletes, yeah. the student body, it's, it's, everybody. it's pretty yeah. significant, um, you know, and, and I think that, that you're seeing it everywhere. And, and, and again, we have an obligation uh, to provide those resources. The university has an obligation to provide those resources. And, you know, one of the things that first things I did, I think in the first year, if you remember, we started the Colonial Champions Fund. Yes. And there are six different areas that, that we, you know, we go out and, and raise money for. I mean, yeah, I mean, we always want to raise money for capital projects and, 
you know, you want graphics and branding, you want to make everything look really pretty, and you know, we, you know, we want to be able to, you know, um, supplement our operating budgets. But you know, again, we try to raise quite a bit of money too for supplementing these support services and academic services for our student athletes and uh, the nutrition side of it, the mental health and wellness side, the academic, you know, success for our student athletes. And um, you know, again, I'm awful proud of that. And sure. um, you know, many times when I go and speak. Um, whether it's to a civic club or, you know, speak to alumni groups. I mean, I'm talking, you know, 50% of the time, you know, about what we're, what we're doing to try to win championships and 50% of the time, you know, about what we're trying to do to graduate our student athletes sure. and to be able to provide them a, you know, world-class experience while they're here for the, whether it's one year, two years, or four years. You know, with the transfer portal, you never know. It could be one year, it could be two years, it could be four years. Um, we're hoping to have them all for four years, you know. Um, I'm sure most coaches are as well, but yeah. You never know these days. That's right. We're going to come back one more segment with Chris King, the Vice President and Director of Athletics here at Robert Morris University. I want to ask you about next year. Coming up, we'll do that next on The Bobby Mo Show. At First Commonwealth Bank, we're excited to be your community bank, here to help you build greater financial confidence through the everyday moments of life by supporting local businesses that strengthen communities to helping families find a house they love to call home and saving for whatever tomorrow brings. Visit any of our community offices to start your journey to better or visit fcbanking.com. First Commonwealth Bank, member FDIC. Many families in our community are struggling to make ends meet and can't afford their monthly utility bills. They are at risk of a gas, water, or electric service shutoff, which could make it impossible to do even the most basic of household tasks. You can make a difference by making a donation to Dollar Energy Fund. Your contribution will be matched dollar for dollar by Dollar Energy Fund's utility partners, and 100% of all donations will be used to help local families maintain or restore utility services. Help your neighbors in need and donate today at dollarenergy.org. Support Dollar Energy Fund today and help your neighbors in need stay warm this winter. Each year, more than 13,000 households in Pennsylvania receive grants from Dollar Energy Fund, enabling them to maintain or restore basic gas, water, wastewater, or electric utility service. Find out how a small contribution can score big with those in need. Visit dollarenergyfund.org or text DEF. That's DEF to 53555. Once again, welcome to the Bobby Mo Show, segment number three with Vice President and Director of Athletics, Chris King, graduate of Robert Morris University and a very proud uh, AD right now uh, in charge of this uh, vast and continually growing program here at Robert Morris. And speaking of growing, I know you're doing a lot of upgrades, not only for the spring sports, but this coming fall, Joe Walton Stadium might look a little bit different. It's going to look quite a bit different. Do you want me, you want me to unveil the surprises? Well, I don't know. How much can yeah. you tell me, or, or are we keeping a lot of this? You know, secret? I mean, I, I can I can tell you. You know, I'm kind of the athletic director, so I can I can break <laughs> the, break the, break the secrets at any time. Yeah, we'll we'll release it at, at different times over okay. the next you know month or so. But yeah, I'm more than happy to 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 uh, uh, break that information out now. But no, we uh, we've been we've been doing some small upgrades and small improvements here uh, over the last couple of months and so um, in, in the entrance of Joe Walton Stadium you know we've kind of redid the entrance area um, and so more for recruiting purposes so redid the flooring redid the lighting we've redone the corridors that go down uh, throughout the to locker room area we're getting ready to put graphics and branding up um, and then of course we've done some segment rooms which are really important for the coaches you know uh, put some new technology in there and all that so they have some spaces uh, to be able to do their films Film, film with the players and all that, but that's the small things. Uh, the big things, um, uh, you remember the Appalachian State game, uh, the extra sure game do. that yeah. we got kind of stuck with because yeah. of some defections from the Big South, and right. we got the aim, get extra game guarantee. And Although, so, one of the better games that the Colonials yeah, played this was, past yeah, season. definitely, at least yeah. for three quarters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, there was a reason for that. When I, co co when I called Coach Clark, I said, so, you know, I, we, we got to get a game in, and, and I have an extra game, and I said, but I'll, I'll make you a deal. If, if, we, if we play this game, we'll use the game guarantee, and uh, we'll, we'll renovate the athletic training room. And he uh -huh. said, done. And so um, right after the Atlantic Sun uh, lacrosse, men's lacrosse tournament, we'll start, and we're going to completely gut the athletic training room where the old weight room is and sure. completely gut it. And so we're pretty excited about that. And so it, uh, it'll be um, utilized for football and men's women's lacrosse, but for all of our sports as well. And so. 
Uh, we'll have, actually have some new hot and cold tubs in there, all new, um, you know, be completely redone with the carpet and the lights and, you know, the bling bling and all the new training tables and everything. So, all the things the students love. And it will actually um, it'll be much larger and have the capacity for a football and lacrosse teams. So we can actually have more than just one team in there at gotcha. one time. And it'll, uh, they'll have a rehab area for our team doctors and all that for our players. So pretty excited about that. And then the big one uh, is uh, you usually don't have to wait 17 years to change out a scoreboard. <laughs> uh, and we're going to have a new video board. Okay. Uh, and we're also going to have another scoreboard at the other end, uh, the, uh, the south end zone. Excellent. And then a uh, brand new sound system. Uh, so um, we are pretty excited about that. So it's going to have a new flair uh, at Joe Walton Stadium. And of course, it'll help with the fan experience and the game day experience. And so that will arrive sometime mid-June, go up in July, be ready for football season. So we're pretty darn excited that we actually will have a state-of-the-art LED Dactronics video board, scoreboard, new sound system. Um, and so we're getting up with the times. I'm glad I asked him. Yes. He let the cat out of the bag I for did. us here on the Bobby Mo Show. Chris, that's, that sounds just so, so exciting. I know we're all looking forward uh, to seeing those changes. And uh, I know the student athletes are looking forward to yes. them too because it, it means a lot to them. Yeah, so and again, it's, it's, um, it's well overdue. Uh, Joe Walton Stadium is a beautiful stadium on the outside. And the inside, uh, it's time for us to start, you know, uh, making it much more beautiful on the inside. And then, of course, you know, again, it, the fan experience is, is a big deal. And so we have six home games next year. Yep. Uh, we should be sold out the first three games. There's no doubt about it. Uh, home games, you're always, first home game, you're always going to be sold out. Homecoming, and then, of course, with Howard, I think we're going to be sold out. And I think the video board uh, is going to only enhance what we've already done, um, you know, in the, in the early part of the season. So then it's up to Coach Clark um, yep. to make sure that he puts some W's on that new video slash scoreboard. Uh, for the back end of the season. So I think it could be a really exciting season. We have, you know, with the six home games, normally we have five. Uh, and we're going to have our first night game in a long time. Right. Um, so we're going to go back to night games, one night game every year to start the season. Uh, so we're pretty excited about that. So there's some, we'll have some nice tailgating, two games in a row, first night game, and then, of course, homecoming. So Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Trying Sounds to, like trying to bring some long. excitement. Trying okay. to bring some excitement to campus. It's going to be a lot of fun. Not yeah. that there's no excitement here right now. There is. Yes. But it's just going to be that much more. Chris, thank you so much for your time thank and, you. and your candor here today and, uh, mm -hmm. and letting the cat out of the bag, too. Yeah, yeah. We appreciate that. <laughs> That's Chris King, the Director of Athletics and uh, Vice President and Director of Athletics here at Robert Morris University. I'm Chris Shovlin. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in to The Bobby Mo Show. We'll see you next time.